Section six, pain relief and coping strategies. Okay, so when you think about pain relief and coping strategies and skills, you probably think about what am I going to be able to use when I'm in the active part of labour, when I'm in the hospital, what have you got to offer me? What pain relief is available for me? And we will talk about that, but we'll talk about that in part B of this video, yeah? Um, the reason that I want to do that in part B is I want to start off by talking about the less formal forms of pain relief, the things that you can use at home in that early part of labour, as it's all just beginning, in that latent phase, in that preparing phase. And believe me, if you're using, you know, the stuff that you're using in that early part of labour will transfer over to be used in the hospital as well. And you may choose then to use the more formal stuff alongside of it or not. I don't know. Every labour is different. But I want to start off by thinking about the less formal things. And to do that, I just want you to cast your minds back just for a few moments to this time last year. Imagine it's this time last year. It's late in the evening. You're not pregnant. You're just off to bed and you've got some backache. What would you do about it? So backache. Many people would say, I'm going to try and go to sleep and forget about it. Others would say, I'll take some paracetamol. Others would say, I'll get my um, a hot water bottle or a wheaty bag and put it, you know, where, where it hurts. Others would say, they'll try and persuade their partner to do a little bit of massage, yeah? And others would say, do you know, I might run a bath, I might get in a bath. When you phone in and you speak to us and you think that you might be a neighbour, if we don't think it's time for you to come in yet, we might well suggest, have you had a bath? Have you had a couple of paracetamol? Give it a try. Um, give us a call back in an hour or two. Let us know how you're getting on. Often we don't get that phone call because you have the bath, you have the couple of paracetamol, and you think, well, it's not quite the hour yet. I'd go and have a little lie down. And then, of course, what happens is to you, you fall asleep. You might think, I don't want this to happen. I've been waiting 40-odd weeks for this baby to come. Now that I start to feel something, I need to be up. I need to be moving around. I need gravity on my side. I need to make most space for this baby to come down through the bath canal, all the rest of it. And actually, whilst that is all true, you also need to rest when you can, yeah? Remember from a previous video, this is not a sprint, this is a marathon. And there's nothing wrong with getting the rest that you can while, while you can. Um, you know, when the contractions, when those waves, when the surges get strong enough, you won't sleep through them. So if you can, it's giving you the rest you need for later when you really need it. So, bath, paracetamol, rest then. Hmm, okay, that sounds good. Um, we start with paracetamol, a little bit controversial at this moment in time with the um, coronavirus uh, um, all around us. The, we know that the, uh, there's the paracetamol in our supermarkets and things has been in quite short supply, but if you have got some, then maybe give it a go, maybe have a couple of paracetamol and try the bath. Now, the bath is a fabulous thing to relax and we all know that whether you've got um, physical aches and pains or whether you're mentally you know, exhausted, to actually get in the bath can feel a really amazing thing to do. Getting in that bath, um, just sitting and relaxing in it. So for, for you in, in, in pregnancy, you might think, especially towards the latter part of pregnancy, you might think, you, you might think, how am I going to get out of that once I get into that bath, yeah? But actually, in the early part of labour, it can be really quite relaxing. Um, underneath your skin is millions and millions of sensory cells. When you submerge those sensory cells in water, it works as a great form of pain relief. It's as good as massage, it's as good as the tennis machine, yeah? So getting in that bath can be really good. Now, we've already mentioned about the breathing and the importance of sitting upright for that breathing, you know, to, to, to get those... those bigger, more effective breaths. But actually, that means that when you're, you know, sitting in the bath, um, you know, I always say that you should fill the bath up to the overflow. But actually, if you're sitting upright in the bath, those, everything that's, you know, that's, that's lots of the areas that's still probably un uncomfortable for you, are probably not submerged in the water, yeah? So if you're sitting upright, you know, your your bump might be like a little mountain peak peering up over the top there. So get a towel, get it wet, bring that wet towel in over the bath, yeah, into the bath with you, and then tip jugs of water over yourself, maybe, or get the shower jet and point it at the eye of the storm, 
um, perhaps get your partner to if, he, if they're around to um, give you um, some some nice head massage yeah? or maybe just maybe get them to brush your hair if you haven't got any knots in it yeah all those things can be really nice just to help you to relax in that early early part of labor but what we do find sometimes is that as pregnancy, as, as the labour, sorry, as the labour progresses, you get nearer the time to come to the hospital, then, and that, you know, as you get nearer to that active part of labour, then actually, um, sometimes what happens is that people, um, they don't like the bath anymore. So when you think, think about it, if you, if you had cramp and you think to yourself, um, I, you know, I, I you get cramp, you don't lie in bed and think about it, you, you get up. Yeah, I've got to get up, I've got to move around. Um, the same if you're in the bath, as those contractions become, 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 begin to get more regular, begin to get stronger, you might think, oh, I don't like being, you know, in here as I'm having one, I need to get up, I need to move, yeah? Um, I need to be upright and forward. I can't, you know, I don't feel comfortable in the bath. But actually, um, you know, that might be more tricky to get in and out. So what sometimes happens is by the time the girls come into hospital in the active part of labour, then um, they say to us, um, I know I've got my birth preferences page or my birth plan that um, I, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to use the birthing pool, but actually me and water of party company. I tried the bath at home and I didn't like it. Don't let that be you, because as I say, underneath the skin is millions and millions of sensory cells, and when you submerge those sensory cells in water, it works as a great form of pain relief. And although the birthing pool is just a, like a, a bath of water, it's a much bigger volume of water, and so actually much more of you will be submerged in there. So it can feel completely different, yeah? And many girls that get in the birthing pool don't just sit in the birthing pool, though when you're in the birthing pool you tend to sit more lightly in it than when you're sitting on a, the, your bottoms on the heavy, you know, heavy bottoms on the bottom of a bath, you tend to sit more lightly. But actually many girls in the birthing pool will be, you know, kneeling up in the birthing pool, leaning, uh, you know, their elbows leaning over the edge of the birthing pool like this, which is great because everything that's hurting you is submerged in the water. But also, going back to our pelvis from before, remember what we said, when you're not sitting on your bottom, of course, what happens is so the baby's coming down through the birth canal, it sort of leans on the pelvis from within, which tips it up. This bit goes down, this part of the spine goes up, and there's more space through the birth canal. So that's amazing if you're in the water, you're not like sitting on that coccyx, curling it around, making less space. Of course, if you can't be in the water, or you don't want to be in the water, this same thing can be achieved if you're kneeling up, or walking around, of course, or kneeling up over the bed. So rather than sitting on the bed, sitting back, laying back, so your back is against the backrest, your bottom's on the, you know, the, the base of the bed there. If you turn around so that your knees are where your bottom should be and your tummy is resting over the backrest on the pillows, then actually you're doing exactly the same thing again. The, the, you're not sitting on anything, you're well supported, but that coccyx is not being curled around and there's more space for that active passenger of yours, that baby, to come down through the birth canal. So the birthing pool is amazing, but don't be put off of it if you didn't like the bath towards the end of the time at home, is what I would say to you. So bath, paracetamol and rest are perfect, perfect starting tools. But there is something else that you might find really useful um, that transitions really from being when you're in the uh, early part of labour at home and you might use it on the way to the hospital and you might use it in the hospital. And that is a TENS machine. And so I'm going to talk about the TENS machine in a second um, in um, the, the next little video. So bath, paracetamol, rest. Um, don't forget to go out for, you know, to, to, to um, you know, have certainly uh, have something to eat, certainly have a plod around in the garden, all that sort of thing, anywhere that you can just be at this time, just to, um, you know, sort of to take your mind off things, watch something funny on the on the telly, anything that makes you chuckle is going to make you feel more relaxed, but certainly eating and drinking, and also don't forget, you know, eating and drinking is really important, you need to fuel that engine, but also don't forget, you know, um, you need to drink regularly, as soon as you start taking bigger breaths, 
um, you get drier and you need to be well hydrated because in the same way as we spoke about before and um, when we were talking about those surges those waves those contractions we said if um, you know when people are anxious worried or afraid the lion's share of the blood supply went to the part of the body to help you you know um, deal with that if you didn't have such a good blood supply to the groups of muscles down here in the abdomen as the womb was tightening and releasing those groups of muscles didn't rub over each other so smoothly if you're dehydrated the same thing but also remember what we also said how the bladder and the womb and the bowel are really close together so um when you're drinking plenty do remember to make a conscious effort in that early part of labor as well as in the active part of labor of going to the toilet readily as well going having a wee because actually um when the bladder is full it can work a bit like a dam and it can you know stop the baby coming down through the birth canal and also you don't want the womb constantly rubbing on the bladder either so so you know it's really important go to the toilet have a wee regularly and drink plenty and watch funny things on the telly, um, uh, you know, sort of, uh, uh, you know, try and get some rest, uh, eat and drink, small frequent meals, all those things are going to help you um, in that early part of labour, ready for when you get into the active part of labour and, and that birth experience. And as I say, in the next part of the video, we'll start off by discussing the TENS machine because it's used, you need to have that already in 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 place for most people before you get to the hospital. We'll talk about that next.